Hi students, welcome to Music 1400 Module 4. In this module we're going to talk about basic synthesizer architecture. In other words, what are the elements that create or make up a basic synthesizer? There are a number of types of synthesis that we will discuss in this module. The first one that we're going to discuss is a form of analog synthesis called subtractive synthesis. And stereotypically, subtractive synthesis has three main elements or pieces that make up uh, this process. The first one is an oscillator. The second one is some type of filtering. And the third one is envelopes. So those are the three elements that make up subtractive synthesis. And subtractive synthesis is probably the most widely used uh, synthesis process. Synthesis can be defined as the process of taking multiple elements, combining them together to create something new. In this case, these individual elements are our oscillator, our filters, and our envelopes. The basic synthesizer architecture, as we mentioned in our introduction, starts with oscillators and filters and envelopes. So we're going to start our discussion first with oscillators. So what is an oscillator? When we talked about the basic audio signal path in module number two, we discussed the fact that before we can record a sound, we have to have a sound source, and that sound source has to generate acoustic waves or sound waves that then hit our ear, make our ear vibrate, and our eardrum mechanically then turns that into uh, electrical nerve pulses that we send to our brain. The microphone is a similar device. It captures those waveforms and turns them into an electrical pulse or waveform. In an electronic synthesizer, the actual waveform itself doesn't generate sound waves. It generates waves that are electrical waves or pulses. So kind of similar to the type of waveform we got uh, from a microphone. After we caught those waves that were being made, you know, by a, a musical instrument of some type. So in a synthesizer, we are using an oscillator that's creating an electrical pulse or wave to create its sound. There are essentially four or five types of waves that are typically produced by traditional synthesizers. They are the sine wave. The next is the triangle wave. Next would be, you know, maybe a square wave. And lastly, a sawtooth wave. It looks something like that. Okay, so each of these has a center line. You can see that each of these gets its name from the fact of how it looks. These form individual triangles. These form an individual square. And this forms a shape that uh, resembles the sawtooth on a, uh, like a handsaw or a table saw or something like that. So these are the wave types that are generated and create sound, and this is our originating or original sound source, much like your voice might produce a sound wave, or a violin might produce a sound wave, or a brass instrument might produce a sound wave. These electrical waves are produced by the synthesizer. These sound waves are the beginning sources of our sound creation process in this basic synthesizer architecture. Let's look at what these individual waves actually sound like and actually how they look. Okay, so let's go into Pro Tools and we're going to add a track. And on that track, I am going to place what's called a signal generator. You can see it's going to generate certain waveforms. And these are actually very similar, if not identical, to the waveforms that 
our synthesizer will produce. So this is the very heart or basis of sound creation using a synthesizer. So what I'm going to do first is we will record the audio out of these uh, each of these waveforms and we can analyze them and look at them. So I'm going to start my recording process here and then I'll change to a uh, after this to a triangle wave and then to a square wave and finally to a sawtooth wave. Now we've actually recorded the audio from our makeshift oscillator right here. And we can actually go in and we can look at these, analyze them, see how they look, see if they actually look like what this diagram says that they look like. So if we zoom in, you can see that, amazingly enough, these do actually resemble the sine wave. And also, how do they sound? It's kind of a smooth, the sine wave is kind of a smooth, gentle sound, not piercing, not too harsh. So now let's go look at the next wave, which is a triangle wave. You see, if we zoom in and look at these, they do resemble a triangle. So how do these sound different than a sine wave? Here's the sine, and then there's the triangle. Sine, triangle. So a little bit more roughness to the sound, a little bit more piercing, but not much. Still quite a smooth sound. The next one that we'll go look at is the square wave. And you can see it does resemble a square. Individual square right here, individual square right here. So let's look at how the square wave sounds. Triangle, square. So it has some higher frequencies, it's definitely more harsh. And then here is the sawtooth wave, and it definitely has a little more bite to it. And you can see by looking at the waveforms that it's understandable. Very sharp points, and those uh, we can hear, obviously, we can hear those audibly. These waveforms then, the sine, triangle, square, and sawtooth wave are really the foundational sound sources for our synthesis process. There is one other type of oscillator that I wanted to discuss with you quickly. And uh, this oscillator type is a little bit different. Actually, it's a lot different. We're going to talk about it later, but I wanted to mention it now while we're talking about oscillators. It's called a low frequency oscillator, or for abbreviation, LFO. That's a very common term used in synthesis. You'll see it all the time. It has a very specific function. It is an oscillator. It does produce a wave, but this wave is used for other purposes. The important thing to note about a low frequency oscillator is that it has real specific frequencies. Generally speaking, a low frequency oscillator is less than 20 hertz. So that tells you right there something about this type of oscillator. What it tells you is that if it's below 20 hertz, then we won't be able to hear it. It is an inaudible frequency. So obviously it's not used to beef up the bottom end of a sound or something like that because we can't hear it. And it does have another purpose. We will discuss that a little bit later. So those are the two types of oscillators uh, that you need to know about. An electronic oscillator that produces varying types of waveforms and a low frequency oscillator uh, that is used to affect or change a sound.